Hi everyone, welcome to Glitz First Glamour. I tried to simplify it. Those of you that do have any um, Coastal Sense brushes or that 22 piece brush set, um, I do have some alternatives for you. Uh, I did show some that you might be able to find at a cheaper price. If you are interested in seeing how I achieve this look, please stay tuned. So I'm just going to go on ahead and prime my eyes because I am going to do that first with my Urban Decay Primer Potion. I'm just going to put that on the back of my hand and pat that onto my eyelids. Um, the Urban Decay Primer Potion is also really good for oily lids if you tend to like get creasing and stuff like that. So I'm going to be using Painterly Paint Pot as my base for my eye. If you have a spatula, you can scoop it out with that. I usually just do it on the back of my nail. You can also do this with a white eyeliner. Um, if you have it, NYX has a few really good ones. You can use, so don't feel intimidated if you don't have the exact same product that I'm using. It's not a big deal. by Makeup Geek. I'm going to take a little onto my brush and then I'm just going to lightly dust it right above my crease. And you don't have to worry about being too neat with this. We'll clean it up a little bit later. And now you see how that orange really, really pops? If I was to do it on the back of my hand, it doesn't pop as much. That's why you need a base for something a little lighter than your skin tone. For quick color changes, when you're doing multiple looks and maybe you don't have that many brushes, I use this quick color changer um, that another makeup artist actually suggested. And you're good to go on the next color without worrying about mixing things. So I'm going to take a smaller, uh, more tapered brush, something a little more dense, but not too, too dense, um, because I do want to put in another color under there. Something a little deeper to give like that really nice contrast color. If you have the uh, Coastal Sense palette, feel free to use this brush, it's just as good. And then you're just lightly going to sweep that as close to the lid, but try to focus in the crease. And that kind of gives us the color contrast that we really are looking for. So we're going to do the same with the other eye. And again, don't worry about being super neat with it, it's okay. Go back and clean it up later. What you don't want to do is go exactly over the color that we put prior because you still want it to like progressively fade out. As you can see, these colors are very similar. And I'm gonna put that a little in the corners as well. If you have the Coastal Sense brush set. We are going to be taking this guy right here. It's very, very dense, small. I like to use these a lot for glitters because they tend to get all over the place. And if you just pat it on, then they kind of stay in place a little better. And I'm going to be taking I Spy by ColourPop. Now ColourPop is an amazing brand. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to pat it on the entire lid. Kind of just to clean up whatever shadow may have fallen. You can also do this with Painterly. I'm just using this one because it's a little easier to work with. Um, it's a much cheaper product. That's something that you always want to be taking into consideration. And it's a shadow, so it's still going to give me a nice color payoff. I'm going to focus on the lid with this color and not too much in the creases because I do want that line to be very sharp and precise. <clears throat> you don't want to take the chance in ruining it with a brush. 
If you don't have the ColourPop, then you can go in and do it with either your flesh tone pencil, your another eyeshadow, maybe if you have a cream eyeshadow, if you have the NYX uh, white, either the pencil or the pot, you can use those as well. And as you can see, I'm just patting that on. Now with my flesh toned pencil, I do want to keep that very precise line. Bring that all the way down to your tear duct. And now the line that you want to draw on your lid should be right above your crease. Because if you put in the crease when you open your eyes, what happens? You don't see it. So you want to put it right above. Be very careful when doing this. And then you can blend it out. Now you're going to do the same thing on the other side, but you want them to match. Now you want to make sure that your eye shapes are the same. Mine's are a little off, so I'm just going to face plant into the mirror to make sure that I can get them exactly the same because I am a Virgo and I'm ain't all like that and now keep in mind that with the pencils you don't have to press super hard you always want to be very careful with the skin on your eyes because it is super sensitive and you really don't want any wrinkles none of us do I'm just gonna blend this out a little bit Um, working with pigments can be kind of difficult, so you'll probably want to stick with brushes like this that are very dense and won't make too much of a mess. You also want to try to make sure that your brush is dry when you're using pigments. If you use the pigments wet, they do become darker. They are a lot easier to apply, but the colors do change when you do that. So I'm just going to take this and pat it all over my lid right up into that crease. It doesn't have to be perfect on the crease. If you're a little lower, that's fine. You won't really be able to tell because of the nude colors that we used, which is why it's so important. And you saw I just kind of patted that in instead of like sweeping it because we treat pigments kind of like glitters because they can be messy. And you want to make sure that the lid is like fully covered. Don't worry about going out into this corner so much because we are going to use a different color there. And in the inner corners, if you want to just blend that line out a little bit, feel free. Uh, just don't go past like right here because you are going to need that sharp defined line there. So now as you can see there's like a little fallout under my eye that is why we are doing the eye before the foundation and if you mess up the crease don't worry we can always go back and fix it it's just more time consuming don't freak out it's just makeup we can wipe it off if we need to and with the same brush after you've cleaned off the rose you're gonna go in with a copper sparkle on the outside So for your initial pads, you'll want to focus on the outside corner and then slowly move that closer towards the inside. Just because you want them to blend nicely and you don't want that harsh pink and orange. So a good way to get rid of the underfall is with a uh, fan brush. <clears throat> I'm going to use this one. It's one of my favorites. Uh, I think I got it on like eBay or something like that. And it was Makeup can be really simple and really fun. I did deepen up like right outside the crease with this really itsy bitsy tiny brush. If you don't have one of these, you can also use one of these. This one is just a lot more dense and it just doesn't give the same blending effect. So with this brush, you just take a little bit of Film Noir by MAC. It's my contour color. Um, I'm just gonna take a little bit onto the brush and then lightly sweep it right above where we did that cut crease. 
with the eyeliner. You'll also want to sweep that into the corner and like blend it out. You can keep it right in that little dip. Definitely connect them on the ends. And you see that slowly that little contour line towards the outside is starting to disappear. That's kind of the effect that we're going for. You don't want to bring it in too much though. You do still want that cut crease to be very visible. If you have a heavy hand, you might want to use something like this just to place the powder and then blend it out with something a little more fluffy, maybe something more dense like this guy. So now you'll see that there's like a, <clears throat> I want to call it an angle right here. It's not completely shaded, like it's not a straight line, it is an angle. That's how you want to keep it because when you do your liner, you want it to just show just a little bit, like very, very subtle. Because Mythology does have glitters to it, I'm going to just be very, very careful. So you're just going to pat that on. And I'm just going to keep that on the inner corner of the eye. Just to kind of make that pink pop a little more. I'm going to save the eyeliner and the glitter liner for after we do the concealer. Personally, I really like Max Black Track Eyeliner. Feel free to use whatever eyeliner you have. I really like this because it gives me a really defined um, line, which is something that um, most eyeliner brushes don't really do. Um, sometimes I use like angled brushes, and even those are kind of difficult to get that kind of a precise line with. Draw a line right above my lash line. See, I've stopped right about here because here's where I want to go straight out. And then from the center of my eye, I'm just following that straight out. See how that line just goes right out? Now I'll go back in and fill that through and connect the dot. So whether it's lashes or like lining underneath or in your waterline, just something to accentuate the eye. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Everybody's eye shape is completely different and their techniques for eyeliner might be different, so if you have one that works for you, definitely stick with it. See, and again I'm stopping like right there from the center, we want to go straight out. Yay! We did a pretty good job! Eyeliner is always 50-50. You never really know how it's going to go. You want to get that really sharp point on the end. So now that the black eyeliner is done, I'm going to do a dark one underneath it. We're going to take the Film Noir contour color that we were using, that we also used on our eyes. And we're gonna give ourselves a little line underneath. We're gonna do the same on the other side. You want it to be very even. And we're just gonna blend that in to our lower lash line. Then with my Urban Decay 24 seven waterproof liquid liner, <laughs> in the color gold or a dorado we're gonna put that right in between the two liners and this is what I mean the trouble of the symmetry this eye looks great this one does it we're gonna go with seduction yeah it broke in half a bit so we're just gonna give a nice smile and toss that onto the apples of our cheeks. Some of us have bigger apples than others. I'm definitely one of them with bigger ones. There you have 
nice rosy blushing cheeks. I am gonna blend it out a little bit because my goal is always to make everything look as natural as possible. I'm gonna lightly dust that at the highest points of my cheekbones. I kinda wanna focus it towards the outsides of your face. That just gives the illusion of a higher cheekbone. That's what every girl wants, right? So I'm also going to take a little and dust it on my cupid's bow. I'm gonna put a little contour there as well. I'm gonna take my Anastasia contour, just put a little bit on my Real Techniques brush, and I'm kinda gonna pout. Now you see my little cupid's bow a little more. going to be applying these lashes. They are Ardell's Mega Volume Lashes. They almost look like they're um, layered, but they're not. All right, love, so once you have both of your lashes on, all we have to do is put on our lipstick. I'm gonna be using Diva by MAC and the Milani Amore Matte. Because this is the darker color, I'm gonna try to leave that only on the outside. And as you saw, I did one side at a time. That way I can still keep my cupid's bow nice and clean. And then I'm gonna put the red right in the center. That way, red pops. Thank you for watching Glitz First Glamour. Uh, I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed this tutorial. It was a pleasure making it for you. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Uh, down below you also have all of the products used. I hope that this tutorial was helpful and if it wasn't, please let me know how I can improve it for you. Thank you for watching Clits First Glamour. Pardon me while I sip my bubbly.